like just the basic question. So can you tell me what or how you're thinking about what a metaverse is and how Superworld fits into that? Yeah, so, you know, the way I think of the metaverse is it's kind of the summation of uh, all virtual worlds, online, offline interfaces, um, really, um, you know, any of the interfaces that we uh, utilize uh, offline and offline, uh, offline and online, um, and, uh, you know, including uh, centralized and decentralized uh, uh, platforms. So just as a follow-up, so it doesn't have to be blockchain enabled? I don't think it does, no. Um, uh, it, it includes uh, blockchain and non-blockchain enabled uh, virtual worlds. Um, and uh, again, uh, uh, you know, it, it is uh, the internet as well. It, it's, it's kind of like the new, you know, the, 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 the advancement of, of what the internet is, is, is going to become. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so how would you describe Superworld? How are you thinking about it? Yeah, so Superworld's a virtual world built on top of the real world. Um, we, uh, you know, I, I use a three-pronged analogy to talk about Superworld. Um, the first prong of that is Pokemon Go, which is the idea that you can add digital information to the real world. Uh, that information again, uh, is composed of an infinite number of filters on the real world. So I have a world, you have a world, brands have worlds, all of these filters uh, ex exist anywhere in the world um, on top of the real world. Um, so if I come to, you know, Berkeley or New York or Beijing or Madrid or anywhere in the world, you could tell me to check out your world and I could walk around and, and see content, uh, you know, access information, discover information, photos, videos, messages, a hologram of yourself, NFTs placed around the world. Uh, again, there's an infinite number of filters. So that's the first part of the Superworld analogy is Pokemon Go. The second part of the analogy is, is Foursquare, which is a data analogy. On the data side, we believe in permission use of data, data integrity, data sovereignty. Basically, if there's an infinite number of virtual worlds, there's a lot of data. And so we want users to, to earn crypto from their usage of data. And, and most importantly, you know, what we want to do is we want to focus on people's real lives and focus on the real world. And we want to focus on how can we utilize this user activity to empower people and, and, and improve the real world. So Superworld's really focused on building a better world. What does that mean to us? It means that when you do user activity in Superworld, we'll benefit the real world. Well, as an example of that, when you buy a plot of virtual land in Superworld, we'll plant a tree in the real world. You know, we've been working with NFTs to, to help in, in Flint, Michigan with the water issue there. We've, we've worked in the Amazon uh, recently, last week to bring together two warring tribes uh, to create art NFTs. Uh, in the Amazon and showcase what's happening there. We've worked in the World Bank in the Caribbean. So again, a big focus of, of Superworld is how can we util utilize all this content and activity to do things that are very positive for the world? And then the third part of the Superworld analogy is monopoly. We've divided the surface of the earth into 64 billion virtual blocks, each block covering a city block of land. And if you buy one of those blocks, you're buying an, 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 NF an, NF an NFT and that's giving you a share of any of the economics. So advertising, e-commerce, digital commerce, data analytics and gaming. And on top of that, we're building applications. So we have a mobile app that allows you to create, discover and monetize anything anywhere. Uh, that's an open beta. We're actually heads down kind of building that out and building the features out on that. It's out there in the market, but there's a lot of work to do to, to make that fully robust. And then we have an NFT marketplace that allows you to share content and digital assets inside or you know assets created outside of super world into super world and then we're tokenizing and moving into DeFi. so that's that's a lot there but that's the high level kind of overview of the virtual world we're creating i think you're probably yeah. quite busy um but yeah, just so yeah. let, let's suppose that i wanted to put my toe into super world as a consumer yeah. how uh -huh. would i do that what would i do yeah. So, you know, again, as if you understand the vision, um, you know, I and, and you understand kind of what we're building, the, the way that most people currently access Superworld is they can come onto our platform. And, you know, I always say everyone has a special place. So you can come on board and buy a plot of virtual land. You're buying an NFT um, and therefore you're becoming a key. So you're becoming a platform. platform. And you, you know, again, 
becoming an owner of a place on the platform and again get share of any of the there. Um, you don't have to buy them. the other one. Uh, you can uh, come to our NFT salon, create an NFT, a digital asset, 3D, 2D, audio, any type of digital asset. And then you can place those assets in real world locations and you'd get, you know, those are programmable assets. So you can, you know, take a, uh, a file of, of music or, or, or photo or, you know, 3D object, create an NFT and you can then program it to, to you know, you have some cash flows there from the sales of, of that asset. Um, and then the other thing you can do is utilize our mobile app, which is an open beta and, and start sharing NFTs or sharing content in places around the world. And we're heads down on improving that in the next uh, month, we'll have a kind of an upgraded launch where we'll enable NFT sharing, uh, in real world locations, which is already possible, but we're working on kind of improving that experience. Just as a, so there's a, there's a website that I go to, there's an app that I download. That's right. And the mm -hmm. currency, the currency that I would use would be a stable coin or how, how does that so, work? Yes. So currently we're selling real estate on the Ethereum blockchain. And so you need ether, you'd, you'd get a wallet, a web three wallet. Um, you'd fill it with ether or you could use, you know, BitPay and use other uh, cryptocurrency to buy um, super world real estate. So we're making, we're trying to make it as easy as possible to access uh, the real estate platform. There's about five wallets available. Uh, there's BitPay. Uh, I think we're going to have MoonPay shortly. So you can use credit cards and you can use credit cards in those wallets as well, but that's how you buy the real estate. Again, you just go to search, you can find places anywhere in the world and you can start acquiring places that you, you love and, and want to become a case key stakeholder at. Uh, and then on the, um, the NFT salon that's also on Ethereum. So um, same thing there as you, you, you know, you'd, you'd be able to, to, to utilize a wallet and uh, to create NFTs on the Ethereum blockchain. And we're doing other integrations. So we're blockchain interoperable in our, in our vision. Um, so you'll see other, you know, blockchains soon coming online, like flow, uh, potentially Solana, other blockchains, and then other layer two solutions as well. Oh, great. And so, how do you um, how do you envisage uh, entrepreneurs interacting with Superworld? What do you think that they're going to do? You know, that's a really um, great question because you know I think Web three uh, has really um, you know demonstrated uh, and you know at the crux of what Web three is about is the ability to have ownership and to be able to you know, create assets um, that are programmable like NFTs and, and be able to, um, you know, really, uh, you know, get the uh, return on, on the time spent in a platform and to be able to, you know, kind of remove the intermediaries, the platform intermediaries um, that take a lot of the, the profits um, that, you know, that we've seen in kind of web two. And so, um, the opportunity for entrepreneurs to get involved and to, you know, create businesses, whether they're, they're DAOs or, you know, they're just kind of utilizing NFTs or other structures um, uh, to, you know, get involved in a platform like ours um, is, is a, a very, you know, I think compelling opportunity. And so in Superworld, um, again, I think on a high level, our vision is to enable anyone to create, discover, and monetize anything anywhere. And so currently, that means that you can, uh, again, utilize digital assets and share those digital assets anywhere. Uh, you can create those digital assets uh, in Superworld or elsewhere and bring them into Superworld. Uh, and then, you know, in, in the near term, we're going to also build out ways to, again, monetize from non-NFT assets. And so uh, any type of digital commerce, uh, e-commerce affiliate programming, um, uh, you know, advertising, um, gaming, uh, data analytics, there's, you know, going to be lots of ways um, in terms of our vision um, that we, we want to enable uh, entrepreneurs to, to really utilize the platform. You know, there's a concept called play to earn, 
um, which is um, you know becoming very popular. And I think the way we're thinking about Superworld and how we differentiate Superworld is Superworld's about your real life. It's about the real world. And so I, what I like to say is it's it's live to earn. You know, I want Nike to pay you on your run. You know, uh, I, I want you know. Um, you to earn money based on what your passions are in the real world. And so a lot of the things that we're doing in Superworld have this virtual physical world connection, physical virtual connection. So as an example of that, you know, we have some entrepreneurs last week who own a, a luxury club called Custom House in New York, and they utilized an NFT in Superworld to sell a membership to their luxury club as an NFT. And you know, again, I talked a little bit about what we did in the Amazon or, 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 or in the Caribbean. We're working to help rebuild uh, Beirut and Lebanon as a partnership with UNESCO. So one of the things that we're doing is anything that's happening in the real world, we're trying to put that virtual linkage to that. And so I think entrepreneurs who have an interest in, in getting into virtuality, getting into Web3 can utilize our platform in a multitude of ways. So just sort of hypothetically, I could mm -hmm. uh, go to Superworld and I could buy mm -hmm. SFO mm -hmm. and then I could provide an interface for people arriving um, and give them information about places to stay in San Francisco or give them coupon, cu coupons on Uber rides or something like that. Mm -hmm. would, that be, would that be the sort of thing that you're thinking about? I mean, yeah. it's pretty pedestrian, but it might make me quite a bit of money. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, exactly. So um, again, there's an infinite number of filters on the real world. So if you owned SFO and you created content there and someone, you know, you think that's a great idea, you know, Hertz can do the same thing or, you know, you name it, um, the individual or brand can do the same thing there. But as the owner of SFO, you're getting a share of all the economics of everything that happens there. Right, and so um, you benefit from other people doing the same thing. So you know, in certain areas or wherever you know you own, you can actually accrete value by making those places you know important places, even if they're not. I mean, SFO is you know obviously a naturally a place where there's people going to be walking through yeah, it. Yeah. But if you think of a you know a, a, a piece of the desert in Nevada um, where Burning Man uh, takes place, that's valuable too. And maybe at some point it wasn't valuable before Burning Man, but you know. In the, physical world value got accreted to this desert and now right. the virtual land there is more valuable than any other you know potentially another desert and similarly you can you can find places and you can create and accrete value in those places um, virtually first and then physically as well just fascinating um, I have to say that I'm very curious about how your thoughts developed how you came to this idea what was the path so, um, you know, again, my background is I, I start off my career in management consulting. I worked on Wall Street and investment banking. It's funny, I, I start off my career, I was at UBS and HSBC and investment banking, but I start off in the real estate investment banking group at UBS and, uh, uh, you know, we're doing virtual real estate now. So it's funny yeah, how yeah, life yeah. kind of comes full circle like that. Um, but, you know, I did corporate finance, public finance and M&A. I got into venture capital. Uh, in New York and started a venture capital fund in Europe, uh, you know, had an idea, wouldn't it be cool to start a VC fund somewhere in the emerging markets that kind of took me over there, started a couple of funds, um, one in Ukraine. And then in Belarus, I started uh, Tech Minsk, which ended up investing in a company called Masquerade, which got bought by Facebook. Masquerade does all of the AR, VR filters on, or, or the AR filters, I should say, on, on Instagram and Facebook. And so that I kind of got some interaction there with AR from that company. Uh, after that, it was early at a company called TopTal, which is an Andreessen Horowitz-backed talent marketplace. So, you know, very global uh, marketplace for talent, which again, Superworld, I think a lot of the ideas of being very global and kind of having people kind of doing things is also kind of attributed to some of that experience. And then about five years ago, I started Rogue Initiative Studios, which is a film, television, gaming, and virtual reality studio in Hollywood. My co-founder produced Call of Duty, Modern Warfare series, and Ghosts, and my production partner is Michael Bay, the action director. And so at Rogue Initiative, what we do is we build new franchises from the ground up, uh, feature film, television, gaming, virtual reality, all the way to amusement park rides and toys. And, and so that kind of gave me this idea of, you know, kind of creating cross-platform content 
And, you know, the linear content, linear film and television and interactive content is really coming together in the last, you know, five to 10 years. If you watch a Michael Bay movie and you watch a Call of Duty game, they, they share a lot of common, you know, uh, components there. You know, Unreal Engine uh, is an example of that. And so, you know, when Pokemon Go came out about five years ago, um, you know, the idea was, you know what? Um, if we can't build the next Pokemon Go, what if we could build a world? What if we could build a place where the next thousand Pokemon Go's gets built onto it, right? And, you know, other people are interested in not just Pokemon Go, but in music and entertainment and, you know, education and history and travel. What if you could empower anyone to build their own virtual world, be able to monetize anything anywhere, and then have that ownership, you know, Web3 gives us. And so that kind of brought together all these ideas, um, kind of what we were doing at Rogue Initiative, as well as, you know, Web3 components of, of owning real estate and, and creating content that can be programmable. It's a fascinating clash of creativity. It just, something comes out. But so you mentioned uh, somebody being acquired by Facebook. And I guess one of the, one of the questions, especially about uh, metaverse is you can have a virtual world, somebody else can have a virtual world. Do you think mm -hmm. there's gonna, we're gonna have competing platforms? Do you think it's gonna be something that the, the virtual worlds become interoperable? How do, you, how, how do you have a sense of where that's gonna go? Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, our, our viewpoint is there, you know, and, and as we look at Web3, I think a lot of the rules of, of Web2 in terms of, you know, kind of a, a winner take all marketplace aren't, aren't necessarily going to be fully applicable here. Um, and I, I think that, you know, in, in our viewpoint, you know, we're building a very open metaverse. And so we want to have content. Um, from any of the other uh, platforms and worlds to be available in Superworld and vice versa, anything that's created in Superworld um, available elsewhere. And I think NFT technology and the structure of how these assets work um, yeah. is really, you know, um, kind of the basis of, of, of that model where you have NFTs that, you know, again, are interoperable across, you know, blockchains and, and soon yeah. likely yeah. interoperable across every, every blockchain. Um, and, you know, again, I think as the fundamental building block of, 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 of these virtual worlds of, of, of the metaverse, um, they serve the purpose of being able to take assets from one virtual world to the other. And so you're not really kind of boxed into to one and you have the ability to, to, to do that. And so on the, on the side uh, where we are, we're, we're helping to build along with our community, um, the world uh, like Superworld, you know, again, our, our philosophy is that we want to be very open. Um, we want to kind of build on uh, technology that is also very open and that is accessible. So again, we're built on Google, we're built on, you know, Apple, uh, on mobile right now, we're building on, we'll build on Oculus. Um, we're hardware agnostic, software agnostic, you know, cross-platform, blockchain interoperable. So we want to be very open um, because I think that's that's the future of how the metaverse is, is going to be built. Certainly with, uh, with crypto, it's very easy to move things across platforms and wrap them if you need to, just so that uh, you can actually move the value. So... Mm -hmm. um, one of the... One thing that I'm... Uh, so you're... Um, let me rephrase this in a different way. What exactly is the governance structure of Superworld? Is there a governance structure or how are you thinking about sort of long-term, is there gonna be a central planner that determines to make sure that somebody doesn't become a land baron and take over all the major cities in the world or? Yeah, so, you know, we are currently on the real estate side organized as an NFT. So you can, you know, anyone can come and buy plots of land anywhere in the world. So there's no restriction on where, you know, uh, our users or what we call super citizens, uh, when you buy a plot of land, can, can buy and sell virtual land. Uh, Stephen Wolfram's uh, part of the Superworld team and 
Um, he's we're partnered with Wolf from Blockchain Labs. He's a well-known AI computer scientist. And so there's a lot that he's helping us do on the virtual real estate side to, you know, again, uh, build a very robust virtual real estate marketplace. And so on that side of the equation, again, anyone can buy and sell. And, and the idea on our side is to make it, you know, as robust as possible. So uh, buyers, um, you know, can understand the value of the land um, that they own, as well as, you know, understand the opportunities to, to buy and sell based on virtual and physical property land dynamics. Um, in terms of governance, uh, as it comes to the platform, um, we are tokenizing and launching a token in the next month or so. Um, and that token, um, besides, you know, uh, other kind of functionality there and mechanisms, again, uh, providing mechanisms to, again, uh, empower people in the real world, enable us to, you know, enhance humanity and our communities and things like that. One of those functions is governance. Uh, and so we want to, you know, again, have a token that gives um, our users and token holders the ability to influence the decisions of Superworld. And again, high level, the vision of Superworld is let's build a better world. Let's, let's take an advantage of the opportunity here to build a platform, you know, in, in a way that, uh, again, is life enhancing, not life escaping. Uh, something else we can talk about. I have two kids and you know, the last thing I want to do is build a virtual world that sucks them into it. Um, I'm a humanist. I, I, I want to build a virtual world that actually improves our real lives, um, helps us in the physical world. So it's slightly ironic to build a virtual world uh, focused on the real world, but that's what we're doing. We're building the gateway to the metaverse. And so part of that governance is, you know, again, um, you know, on that vision of, of of, of giving everyone the power to make these decisions, but also, again, with the, the vision and values that we have in Superworld to, to empower us all and to empower humanity and, 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 and create positivity through these mechanisms. And I think some of those things are really alignment of, of, these, of the business model and mechanisms to do that. Okay, okay. And so uh, you mentioned the fact that you wanna be life affirming. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, how are you going to manage that? Are there going to be guardrails in place that prevent people from uh, becoming completely submerged? Or you just think that the way it's structured is going to prevent them from doing that? That's a good question. Um, you know, I saw a movie called Social Dilemma that was out a couple of years ago on Netflix. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of the audience has seen that movie, but that was very impactful to me about, you know, how data, um, and you know some of the business models uh, in social media kind of influence and affect how we utilize uh, technology. And you know I think Steve Jobs you know called the computer the bicycle for the mind. Um, but oftentimes we we put away our technology when we get when we want to get some work done or when we want to communicate with each other um, uh, or you know be able to concentrate. And you know I think uh, you know I think there are ways to. Um, you know, kind of look at those business models, look at how we're collecting data, um, be more permissioned about that, um, be more um, focused on looking at uh, metrics to determine how, uh, you know, how, how we are enhancing people's lives versus um, maybe distracting them or getting them away from things they want to do. I think some of this is kind of providing the information so people can make their own decisions. Um, but, and, and we see that happening as well. I mean, I think Apple is, 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 is starting to do some of that on the iPhone with, with some software in terms of letting us know kind of our usage of technology and how we're using, uh, using the phone itself. Um, but I think there's a lot more we can do on the business model side um, and a mechanism side on the token side um, to, you know, again, to, to incentivize behavior that, you know, people in this community in Superworld uh, want to, um, want to promote right and uh, uh and and you know again it's just like any you create any society or community um there's ways to add mechanisms um that i think uh are positive for that community and i think those are some of the things we have to think about and again you know i don't have all the right answers uh in in, in on this on this uh exact topic specifically in the sense that i think some of that's evolving but I would, what i'd like to do is is really get the right people around the table to help figure that out uh -huh. Yeah.
Um, this this is sort of going back a little bit, a bit of a throwback. But do you remember mm -hmm. something called Second Life? Yep. Yeah, I know. I know Phil. <laughs> yeah. What did you? Um, so, um, why do you think that Second Life didn't take over the world? And why do you think that the concept of something like a metaverse is going to take over the world? Well, you know, I, I use Second Life, um, uh, an awesome, you know, I think really opened my eyes to, you know, what what is in in you know connect with each other um, to um, really uh, you know again to build businesses um, to uh, be able to. Uh, again, have uh, commerce um, and uh, really, you know, again, live and uh, play and work and learn uh, in a virtual environment. Um, so, uh, you know, again, I think it was um, a, a pretty phenomenal uh, platform for all that it did. And, and, and Phil, Phil is a, a visionary, uh, you know, he's awesome. So, uh, you know, I, I do think that, uh, again, the, the timing of that, as well as, um, you know, the level of technology um, that was available to, to do something um, like a full-on, uh, you know, metaverse type of experience, uh, cross-platform, uh, you know, AR, VR, 3D, um, yeah. you know, some of those things weren't, weren't really possible at that at that time, especially when Second Life came out, and and so. You know, uh, and I, I don't. Maybe we weren't also as a society ready for that, right? I mean, I, I've seen a, an acceleration in the last uh, two years in terms of um, you know people's comfortability with virtuality. I mean, even the Zoom right, call. Right, I right. mean, you know, this wouldn't have poss been possible for most people a year and a half ago. They would be like, "What? We're doing a Zoom call? I'm not up for that." You know. Yeah, yeah, um, now yeah. it's kind of second nature. Everyone's on like 10 Zoom calls a day. And so a lot of these things um, have, have increased in terms of our speed and comfortability because of COVID. And, and um, you know, uh, and, and I think that, uh, you know, that there, there are certain factors why this is now becoming, you know, timing wise better. I think there's, there's a set of technology inflection points. There's a set of, you know, societal inflection points that have all kind of come together. On the technology side, you look at AR cloud, you look at what's happening on mobile, you look at software in terms of the AR side of it, you look at 5G, you know, on the societal side, you know, COVID, um, you know, globalization, um, you know, uh, a, a lot of, uh, I think, comfortability around, you know, uh, being virtual because of, uh, of, of the last couple of years in terms of restrictions on travel and restrictions on, on, on going places have really made this now um, an opportune time. So I think that's a confluence of factors for sure. But in terms of technology, what are you most excited about? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm very excited about the uh, technology that is coming out on the hardware side um, in terms of being able to, um, uh, you know, have a, a pair of uh, AR, you know, XR uh, type uh, glasses. Um, hopefully in the next uh, couple of years, uh, we'll have a form factor that's, you know, a good start to that. It's obviously going to get better over the the course of this decade um but i you know i know for a fact that 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 technology is coming and uh it's gonna be pretty exciting to have a new form factor there instead of you know just staring down at your phone um so i'm really excited about that i'm excited about air cloud um you know the ability to add persistent uh content uh in augmented reality around us so you know digital twin you know mirror world kind of software um, and, you know, in Google and Apple and, you know, Niantic and others are in you know, Snap or spending, uh, you know, billions of dollars there, Facebook to, to make some of that available. So I'm happy to, I'm excited about that becoming a reality and it's, it's, it's getting there, it's moving fast. Um, so those are, I think those are the two, is kind of two things. And then obviously blockchain, I would say the third thing is really kind of empowering this whole ecosystem. And that's moving really fast too. I mean, the economic kind of experiments that are happening in Web3 and the enablement that's happening and the empowerment that's happening is really giving people the incentives to want to, to live and play and work in these worlds.
Yeah, uh, the innovation in sort of blockchain and crypto is just absolutely astounding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very cool. Oh, it's <laughs> fascinating. Um, I wonder if there, um, if anyone has any specific questions that they'd like to ask Krish. I see there are a um, couple. In. Oh, please. Yes, actually, Christine, we do have a couple of questions and some people are starting to raise their hands. Um, if uh, Would we like to call on, I think um, Naresh was the first person who asked a question. Maybe we can go ahead and ask him to ask his question. Naresh, if you'd like to go ahead, please remember to unmute yourself. All right, um, Naresh, we'll come back to you. Um, there's another question from uh, Gornek. If you would like to go ahead and ask your question. Um, yeah, sure, thank you. So, um, you know, uh, uh, in looking at Superworld, you know, obviously there's every possible space on earth, essentially you've, you've divvied, divvied up for purchase and, you know, within that would be where people actually live and where people go to pray and things like that. And so monetizing them for purchase, I could see being offensive to a good number of people. So how do you kind of respond to the idea of turning places that are, you know, not centralized around monetary economics into something like that? Yeah, that's a great question. So one, to be clear, um, in Superworld, we've divided up the surface of the Earth into 64 billion plots, which are divided on longitude and latitude. And so each one of these blocks is 100 meters by 100 meters square, uh, 64 billion in total covering the Earth. And so when you buy a plot of land in Superworld, you're buying a virtual block of land covering the surface of the Earth bounded by longitude and latitude as part of the super world platform. So you're not necessarily buying any specific thing in the physical world. You're buying virtual land covering things or, you know, covering land in the physical world. And obviously the, the topology or what's built there changes depending on, you know, what, what happens in the physical world. Um, and then additionally, to be clear, anyone can create anything anywhere, but there's an infinite number of filters. And so if I'm on a plot of land, I might not see, you know, what Coco has posted there or, you know, anyone here on this in this chat has posted anywhere because I'm only going to see what I'm interested in, in, in seeing. So, you know, again, I have the ability to see only what I want to see and so can everyone else. Um, and again, um, you know, there are an infinite number of filters. And so if I own that plot of land, I'm getting a share of all of all of that, all well, of what that's happening in those filters. And so again, if you're thinking about any place, whether it's a sacred site or you know a park or you know a, a stadium for that matter, um, you know there's going to be lots of content that's going to be seen there. If you think of Instagram, you know there's millions and millions of profiles. I don't see a lot of them. But if there is something that obviously you know violates our terms and conditions that's posted in a place, then that obviously would be curated out or removed. Um, but, you know, literally what I'm going to see as a, as a super citizen or a user of Superworld is I'm going to see what I am actually wanting to access. So if I want to access to your question, religious content um, that conforms uh, with, you know, whatever religious site I'm at or, you know, is about that, I can see that. If I want to see something historical or I want to see something personal, maybe a family photo of someone that was at that site, I can see those things. And there might be lots of other things that are there. Um, and I might not ever see those things. So, um, and then on the on the monetization side of it, again, these plots uh, have nothing to do with what's what's necessarily there. Um, I can view content. I could look at my foot while I'm sitting at a religious site and look at a pair of shoes, or you know, look at you know something that the religious sites wants me to see on my body if I turn the camera around and and look at a filter. So there's a lot of different use cases for um, what you can do in augmented reality. And all we're saying is that, is that, you know, again, as an owner of the plot, you'll get a share of any of the, any of the economics that happen there in any of those use cases or any of those filters. Thank you. Um, we have one person who has their hand raised. So if you could go ahead and unmute yourself, Yunguang. 
And then after that, I think Naresh has come back. So we'll go to you after um, he asks questions. So please go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, um, I think my name is Yu Huang. Um, thanks for your time. It's a, it's a rich, it's a H doesn't pronounce. Okay, just, just said, make it correct. Uh, well, just uh, thanks for your time today. I just have uh, like two or three questions. Uh, make it very brief. Um, the first question, actually you have talked a lot about you know, your intentions to build this world, but I'm very curious about your customers who stay in that world. Um, so uh, would you mind just uh, share with us, you know, who are the first players in the silver world and how do you find them? That's my first question. Yeah, sure, sure. So, you know, we've uh, been around uh, for several years now. So we started out in 2017 uh, and, you know, we were one I of the just first. Like put uh, it together. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you please put yourself on mute. Uh, we were one of the first to the NFT space, you know, and we kind of took inspiration from CryptoKitties and, and what they built and Dapper Labs is, is doing some awesome stuff um, in the space. And, you know, um, as we were building out the platform, um, you know, the first challenge was uh, kind of explaining to people what an NFT was. And when we started doing virtual real estate, we were the first company doing virtual real estate on top of the real world. Uh, and, you know, it was, it was, it was hard to explain to people. And so, um, you know, I think the crypto crowd um, was, was one of the first to understand it. People understand NFTs back then, this was like three years ago, um, you know, but then, you know, what we started realizing is, is that there were a lot of mainstream people who didn't understand crypto necessarily and didn't maybe understand, you know, AR, VR necessarily, or, you know, AI, or a lot of the, the concepts that we were talking about, but we're just very excited about being able to be part of a world, being able to, you know, take a first step, whether it was in AR, VR, or blockchain, or AI, or any of these technologies, you know, they were excited about owning a place, you know, um, being able to build there. And, and so, you know, what we realized was that creators were very interested in buying in Superworld and they were actually the buyers. And when, you know, NFTs started becoming more and more mainstream, that really solved the problem, which is, you know, creators that want, just naturally wanted to create stuff understood NFTs or, you know, were becoming educated about NFTs. And then they understood, oh, this is, this is an NFT and I'm a creator. And so if I'm creating stuff, I can buy a place in the world and I can also create NFTs and build things in these locations. And so, you know, I think what we started realizing is that um, the, the, the customer um, that was very interesting to us or, and as well as was interested in us uh, and what we were building is a customer that is a builder. It could be an educator, an, an artist, a musician, you know, um, uh, an entertainer, you know, you name it, but it's, it's someone that was very interested in, in, you know, kind of creating some content or creating his creating a business and wants to get that out into the world and super world for them, you know, um, you know, the first thing I, I hear every day when I talk to customers is, you know, I, I hear, you know, especially the customers who get what we're doing is they're like, man, this blows up, blows my mind. The eyes get really big because I'm telling them, look, you can create anything anywhere. You can discover that content from anywhere and you can monetize anything anywhere. And then on top of that, you can own places that you love in the world and help other people monetize there as well and, and be able to share in that. And then, you know, again, when we launch a token, there's gonna be lots of other mechanisms for you to, you know, monetize either that location or content or, you know, utilizing token mechanisms like staking and, you know, yield farming and decentralized finance to also be able to monetize. And so back to, you know, to answer your question, I think, um, we, we realized that, you know, and, and some of our investment partners have a thesis called Passionware. And, uh, and that's, the, that's the thesis that we're building a tool that allows anyone to be empowered with their passion. And, and so we realized that our customers are people that are very passionate and want to kind of utilize our tools to, to build out their passions and earn money. And I think that's what Web3 is all about. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the answer. I think the creators are really impressive. Uh, it is a new definition for me. Um, well, actually, I'm. My second question is really related to, 
uh, your answers. Actually, you mentioned, you know, the, uh, the customers want to monetize their like mm -hmm. real asset, virtual real estate or real assets. So do you mm -hmm. think that's the key intention and the key, um, you know, purpose for them to join this world? Or you think there are any other purpose for them to join this world? Yeah, so, you know, again, I, I think that um, people uh, join Superworld for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, I, I think that, uh, again, on a high level, you know, again, just to go through the vision, you know, our, our, our goal is to empower people and empower the real world and empower humanity and, and again, build a better world. And so there's, there's many people that are just very excited about that. I think there's a lot of disillusionment about social media and other platforms out there in the market that people realize they're valuable and they're beneficial, but at the same time, there's some kind of uneasy feeling. Um, I mentioned I have two kids and, you know, want to want to build something that's very positive um, for not only them, but for, for everyone to utilize that, that helps us, that doesn't take away from us. Uh, um, doesn't plug me into a machine all day, but actually helps me in the real world. And again, we have a, a hashtag called Team Superworld, uh, for emoji earth, emoji heart. And, you know, that hashtag is really kind of going to, to your comment, which is we all build Superworld together. Our customers, you know, our super citizens all build Superworld together. And I think, you know, that opportunity in Web3 is what attracts a lot of people. And whether that's, you know, monetization or creating an NFT that's monetizing or creating art in different places. You know, one of our, our um, global ambassadors uh, is Krista Kim, who's, who's very well known in the NFT space as well. She does a lot of things with meditation and, you know, um, making people, um, you know, be able to disconnect from technology and, and you know, and, and utilizing, you know, technologies and, and things to, to help them even when they are using technology, you know? Um, and so, you know, again, I, I think that there's a variety of reasons. I don't think monetization is the only reason for sure. Um, I think a lot of people want a place that they can go, a place that they can own, place that they belong to um, and, and really believe in this, this mission that we have. And again, what, I, what we wanna do is empower them to, to, to monetize when they're doing the things they love, which is living their life. And, you know, if you can go and do things in the real world that you love and you're getting some, you know, some benefit in the virtual world and, and you're able to take that benefit and apply it again back to the real world, that's pretty awesome. And so, you know, again, I think there's a lot of opportunities to, to enable people to build value from the things that they're already doing disconnected to technology and just being connected to it in, in a sense, but not, you know, again, plugged into it per se, right? Um, so we wanna, we wanna do a lot more of that. Yeah, thank you very much. I think it's super yeah. helpful and very inspirational. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think um, somebody else wanted to add, Naresh, you had a question. Otherwise, and after that, if we can yeah. go to Peter, who has his hand raised. Sure. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. OK. So, uh, hey, Harish, I'm Naresh. Uh, very excited to be here in this space. Um, I've been following uh, uh, this crypto space for quite some time, uh, been early investor in some of this, and I'm glad to see some of the, you know, appreciation that happened in, in, in some of the coins. But uh, um, the, the whole idea of um, the interoperability between, uh, for example, say what you have in uh, Fortnite, um, you know, assets that you have, and then ability to really uh, bring it back into say Roblox or any other gaming platform. I think that's very, you know, uh, very fascinating. I uh, totally like the idea and um, ability to convert some of those, um, you know, uh, cryptocurrencies, I mean, using Axis, Axiom or something, I mean, converting that into fiat uh, currency and ability to utilize that for uh, some real uh, world, um, you know, uh, uh, transactions that would be even better. So that means you, you can, uh, really uh, do what you really want to do in the, in the in the virtual world, and then and then uh, convert that value back into something really more tangible, right? We are human beings, you know. We can't continue to live in virtual world all the time. Uh, there has to be something more tangible in the real world. So I I, I really uh, love this whole idea. Um, Thank you. This Thank question you. that I'm about to ask you may have already been addressed. Um, I, I've been going switching back and forth between multiple things here. I'm so sorry if I'm repeating the question, but uh, um, 
see in the in the real world right i think any real estate would have value because it is very unique and it's in the prime location and it is um, you know and you have a property rights to it um in virtual world i think i've just went through your uh, website super world and i see a lot of uh, great locations and i can buy for a few ethereums um uh, i'm just thinking about the value of uh, that property that i'm going to buy as soon as uh, what really happens to that if if there is another uh, super world that's created which is parallel to to your uh, virtual world right um, i mean facebook is coming up with uh, their own metaverse i haven't i don't i haven't really seen what they are going to come up with but uh, with decentra land i think with using the mana tokens i think they can create something on their own so if you have this kind of a um, you know multiple versions of uh, say taj mahal or say you know leaning tower of pizza or, or uh, say white house for that matter uh, how do we tie a, a tangible value to uh, a virtual asset that i buy because it is not really that unique anymore even though we, we say that on the on ethereum blockchain uh, but uh, you may also have a solana or you may have uh, you know some other blockchain that may be coming up in the near future Uh, how do we ensure the uniqueness and the, what really happens to the virtual assets that we buy um if you could clarify that would be awesome yeah it's a it's a great question um you know i i think that uh you know there are going to be other virtual worlds there are other virtual worlds uh you know decentraland is one example sandbox you know uh crypto voxels omnium space upland earth 2 there's you know a variety of uh virtual worlds out there in the space um you know i think ultimately this is about community right just like any other platform um that's out there social network uh blockchain um you know uh this is bringing people together who have similar values um bringing people together that uh want to build uh want to build together on a on a certain platform And so again to be clear you know when you buy superworld real estate um you're buying uh an NFT in superworld right just to just to make sure we're on the same page uh, however um on the blockchain side we're you know again building in a very interoperable way across um other blockchains so ethereum is where we are now but you know ultimately we're blockchain agnostic right so uh if you're using superworld it doesn't matter to us what blockchain you're using um if you are wanting to buy with flow or ethereum or solana you know we want you to be able to access superworld so in that sense you know on our side we want to make superworld as accessible to our customers wherever they are being very customer centric of where you know they how they want to access us okay um at the same time again uh just like any community there will be other communities and you will elect as a customer what community you believe in what customer what what community or platform that you want to be on and maybe you'll be on a number of them right um but in terms of the nfts that we're creating if you buy an nft in superworld you know the value of that nft is based on a variety of factors right um i mentioned to you you know steven wolfram's uh part of the superworld team and you know we're partnered with wolfram blockchain labs they're doing a lot of things uh with us to you know enable us to provide valuation parameters uh for owners of virtual land uh virtual valuation parameters and physical world valuation parameters so you can understand on a dynamic basis what's happening in the physical world or what's happening virtually that's affecting the price of any property that you own and i think you know ultimately this this also comes down to really you know building out a product that our customers love and our customers want to use and our customers value and so as a company just in our own you know uh company strategy and product strategy and 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 product design um for us it's it's really about listening to our super citizens and building a world that they want and you know we're we're lucky and fortunate that we have you know uh a user base of of customers 
that really are galvanized about what we're doing. And I think we're positioning ourselves in the market in a very different way, you know, vis-a-vis -vis Decentraland or Somnium space or crypto boxes, all really great places. Again, you know, super world's the gateway to these other worlds or other blockchains or other decentralized mechanisms, right? Um, de de decentralized finance mechanisms, right? And so again, what we want to do is, is provide a product that our customers want to use. And that's kind of been our plan and has always been our plan. We're very long-term focused. We've been in this market for three years. We didn't jump into NFTs because it's the, you know, the hottest trend right now or the metaverse because it is the hottest trend right now. There's a lot of hot trends that are kind of coinciding to what we're building coincidentally, I guess. But we've been in this market for, for a long time because we really believe in the long-term vision of building a world that everyone can own. And again, it's a very simplistic vision, you know, create, discover, monetize anything anywhere. Um, and we believe that based on that vision and our ability to, to, to keep, you know, focused on our customers and, you know, again, have operational ex excellence and, you know, other values that I think are very important here um, that have been, you know, again, important in other, other industries as well. Um, we can build, we can build a platform that, you know, retains value, has value. And then again, to kind of zone in on your question about the geography, right? If you're buying a plot of land in Superworld and you're owning that geography, that cut that we have of that land is, is unique in the sense to Superworld. I mean, someone could copy that exact kind of cut there, uh, obviously, right? Anyone can be thing. Um, but, you know, over time, we believe that there's higher and higher switching costs to some of that as time gets, becomes a super citizen, starts building, just like, you, you know, there's a lot of cities out there and there's a lot of countries out there. And are you going to switch, you know, where you live? You might, you could. Uh, if another country, you know, offers you uh, a better uh, tax plan or more incentives or, you know, better opportunities, you might actually uproot yourself and move. And, you know, obviously it's not a perfect example because in virtual world, you can probably do it a lot faster, but, you know, um, you might not switch from Dropbox to Box um, because you have, you know, it takes a lot of time to do that. And so, you know, I think there's a lot of factors here that kind of determine, you know, what the switching cost is of moving from one virtual world to other. And I think ultimately it comes down to community. I think that's the thing that I think um, actually defines, you know, our our peer groups that we spend time in. And as we look at building out a virtual world, I think that's that's it's kind of a, it's a society. It's a it's a it's a you know uh, a place, um, and it's it's also a, a, a movement, you know, for us. Um, and so I think there's a lot of things that are very very intrinsic to to people that we're we're trying to really establish and build. So that, I think that kind of touches on some of the things you you asked, but it's a, it's a really good question. I think it's one that's going to evolve as 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 this as this uh, space gets more and more saturated with with ideas and companies. And on our end, again, we're going to be very open. So we 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 are not um, you know going to close anything off here. We want to integrate with the best technologies. You know, be blockchain interoperable, be software agnostic, be hardware agnostic, be cross platform. Got it. Okay, yeah. uh, great, great answer. Yeah. Uh, I think um, I do have a few follow-ups and, and some other points to share, but I don't want to hog the conversation here. Love yeah. to have the opportunity to touch Please. base with you online. Okay. Yeah, I'm CEO at superworldapp.com. So that's my email address, CEO at superworldapp.com. Definitely reach out to me. You know, definitely want to talk to everyone here if they want to want to want to talk more and give us ideas and, and work with us. So love that. Thank you. Peter, you want to go ahead with your question? Sure, thank you. Rish, thank you very much for your time. It's obviously very valuable. You're very busy and you're giving your time to us. And so I, I certainly appreciate it. I'll thank ask you. very quickly, and this is uh, probably a, a rather ignorant question. Uh, I, I go to Superworld and I buy an NFT of a plot of land and that plot of land happens to be, uh, it happens to contain Levi's Stadium and the value derived from that land, the 49ers and the NFL look at me and say, buddy, the value in that land is from our investment, our logo, our name, our advertising. Am, am I a risk? Can they legally come to me and say, you're getting economic value from uh, the investment that we've made. You owe that to us. Can I, can I 
own an NFT that I buy from Superworld that contains someone else's logo and someone else's branding as part of that piece of geography. It, perhaps that's that's a ignorant question. It, it may have all been figured out, but it's I'm curious. Yeah. So again, um, to be clear, in when you buy a plot of land in Superworld, um, again, we, we're selling this. We've divided the surface of the Earth into 64 billion virtual right. blocks, right? And so, when you're buying a block, you're buying a piece of the Superworld platform that covers Earth, um, divided by longitude and latitude in a block, right? And so, again, we have no control or don't know even what is there in the physical world you're buying a part of our platform that covers the surface of the earth and so again if you again uh, look on a map and see what's there physically that's what's there physically you don't you know i always make a joke like if you buy the buy the Bucking, buy buckingham palace you know buy the land that covers buckingham palace and, and super world you're not the queen you know um but you know it's 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 not related per se to the the the, the virtual structure there however you can you can do anything you want anywhere in vir in augmented reality or virtual reality in super world right so again if you're sitting at a stadium you could look at yourself on you know instagram as an example and put some bunny ears on your face and take a video and share it right um and, and again you're just putting an ar filter on your on your face um so similarly you can do the same thing you can put ar filters in different places and 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 look at content or you know you could be in in uh, a location and you know again go on the youtube platform and and look at an ad and you know there's some monetization taking place there um, uh, with you inside, you know, you're inside of a Walmart looking at, at Amazon and you, or YouTube and you're, you know, potentially there's a transaction taking place there between an ad, you know, publisher paying a, a video creator and it's all happening in, in Walmart and Walmart is like, what's going on? That's, that's commerce inside of our store. So, you know, I think there's, there's, there's a lot of things that are happening in terms of monetization that's happening digitally all over the place. Place. And again, to be clear with Superworld, in terms of the land, we're just saying, hey, this is, you know, this is our platform, and you're getting a piece of that geography, and we're just kind of, you know, geographically, um, you know, demarcating that part of the platform and saying, hey, someone can own that as a digital asset and get a share of, of any of the, of the revenue um, that happens there. So I don't, I don't know if I answered your question directly, but if I didn't, I'm happy to go into it further, but that, that's kind of how we see it. You're not, you're not buying any physical assets or any, you know, specific assets of, of, of any structure or physical piece of land. Right. You're, you're buying the NFT and yeah. I, I don't want to, you know, drag, drag down the call because mm -hmm. there are, you were already over time and there are other uh, mm -hmm. good questions waiting, but thank you yeah. very much. That was helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Christine, um, I'll hand it back to you for any um, any last remarks uh, before we wrap it up. So anything, uh, any last remarks from you, Christine and Rish? Uh, thank you very much, Rish. I think we really appreciate um, you sort of spending the time and talking to us a little bit about, I think, what's going to be a very interesting and exciting new step in what's happening in fintech. Thank you. No, it's a, it's been a pleasure uh, to be here. Um, really love uh, Berkeley and and uh, you know really uh, the opportunity to speak to all of you. If you guys have other questions, I'm happy to be in touch. So you know I'm at CEO at SuperWorldApp.com. Definitely get in touch. Always happy to talk. Uh, if you want to reach out to our team, outreach at SuperWorldApp.com. Uh, just come to our website. We're on Twitter. You know you can find us on any social network as well. And uh, we have lots going on. We'll have a token um, launch later this year. So there's lots of ways to get involved. So we'd love to hear from you and would love to have you on our mission. Um, our mission is to build a better world and, you know, love your help. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. So with that, I'd like to wrap up today's event. Thank you so much to our speakers who so graciously agreed to spend an hour with us. And um, I'd like to also thank our alumni and attendees for attending today's event. 
We hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you at future events. So stay tuned for more events uh, from both Berkeley Haas, uh, the Silicon Valley, as well as the Crypto Economics Group. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. See you later.